Redwoods. We honor the memory of three individuals who were a part of racing here at the Redwood Acres Raceway and also at the Oval in its days as a dirt track. Those individuals include Matt Wade, and Matt was loved by his family, of course, and loved everything about race cars. He was devoted to the car, spending uh, all his free time working on it, that car being the 71 car of Mark Murray. He is missed very much by Mark Murray, friends and family, and they are dedicating their first race to Matt and his family, and that is signed by Mark and Connie Murray of Murray Motors, car number 71, in the memory of Matt Wade. Another gentleman whose memory we take note of tonight, Fred Sanchi. Fred passed away on February 15th of this year. He was a promoter in the early 1960s for a couple of years under the Six Rivers Racing Association banner when that was formed. Past president of Six Rivers Racing Association, charter member. He was on the board until the time of his death. He was also uh, responsible the final year of the Racing Association for starting that point fund and the drawing that made sure the drivers out here got some pay at the end of the year as the championship finished up. Fred's son Jeff was the champion in the hobby stock division. I believe Jeff is here tonight with us. The last year, the track was a dirt track, and that was a very big uh, highlight for his dad, Fred Sanchi. He also leaves behind his wife, Viola, and another son, Mike. Those privileged to have known him miss him greatly, Fred Sanchi. And I think a lot of us were uh, taken back when we heard of his passing. Our program tonight is dedicated to the memory of a very special gentleman here at Redwood Acres Raceway. This is the Robert Reif Memorial Race for the opening of 1989. Folks here at Redwood Acres Raceway did a lot of investigating to get some background on uh, Robert's involvement in racing. They came across an article that goes back to the Racing Wheels magazine, February 24th of 1971, so keep that in context. This was back in 1971 when these words were written. It isn't very often that associations can boast of having uh, among its membership, referring to the Six Rivers Racing Association, a man or company who has sponsored a car every year since that association began, talking about the Six Rivers Racing Association. And that person, of course, was Bob Reif. He was owner and operator of Bob's Body Shop in Fortuna, soft-spoken gentleman. Southern draw, came to Fortuna in 1960 from West Virginia, where, as his wife says, they went to all the races they could get to. His first actual involvement in racing began uh, back in 1965 when he joined Six Rivers Racing Association. In the years since, Bob served uh, in the association as tech committeeman, member of the rules committee. He also was secretary, and he just enjoyed uh, always being around to help. A lot of things uh, did not change, really, as Bob continued to be involved in supporting racing. Bob passed away November 13th of 1988, lost his life in an auto accident at the age of 54 you'll see in your program tonight a lot of photographs and a lot more information about robert reif we dedicate this race to him at the opening of the 1989 or 88 season he was instrumental in putting together uh, quite a contingency fund in fact a lot of money for the opening trophy dash and in just a moment we're going to uh, bring you another special presentation regarding uh, the life and loves of Robert Wright, but right now we ask you to uh, remain standing. Would and gentlemen remove your hats for our national anthem? And I believe Sabrina Francis should be ready to do that here in just a moment. Sabrina? Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem, uh, Sabrina Francis.
Thank you very much. And this time we are going to ask you that you remain standing for a few minutes more as we present our memorial lap. States. And last year he was uh, helping Bill O'Neill again in the 11 car. As Juanita, his wife, says, Robert did just about everything in racing except flagging, and he would have enjoyed doing that. He also said he believed in sportsmanship with the same rules for all, and his dedication to racing was dedicated to just that. An additional item that is not mentioned in your program, much of the information I just uh, mentioned about Bob is in tonight's program. Special message from his family tonight. Robert's personal fan club, consisting of his wife Juanita, son Don, and Don's wife Joan, son Chip, also known as Bob and his wife Terry, daughter Cheryl and her husband Barry. He was grandpa to Anne, Leslie, Alana, Melissa, Heather, Justin, Lona, and Jacob. In memory of him, we can think of no better way than to dedicate tonight a perpetual trophy in his honor. The Robert Wright Memorial Trophy will be dedicated tonight. And we understand we will have a four laps of racing. Tim McEwen says, okay, go ahead and warm up those tires. It's kind of a cool night out here, so he'll give them a lap or two to make sure everything's ready to go. And then we'll slow them down, line them up two by two. Our first event. And we'll talk about warming up the tires. These cars literally need to get those tires warmer. The warmer the tires are, the better they should fit, and the better the cars handle. Flag, yellow light saying, okay, let's line them up and get set to go racing. Bill O'Neill, the 11 car, Vic Block, number 23. Jim Walker in the 48 car, and Randy Olson, the 17 car. Three out of four of those cars won main events in 1988. Block, Walker, and Olson. In fact, those were your top three cars in points last year. Who turned three and four? Ideally, we'd like to have the top two cars side by side as they come out of turn four. That's what the flagman likes to look for. And make sure everybody gets an even start. You can see Tim down there shaking his head saying, no, fellas, uh, you're going to have to make it a little cleaner than that. Once again, they start to get on the gas. Looks a little better this time around. There's a the raid. We're on the way. Into turn one, O'Neill on the inside. Vic Block, that high side could be tough to stay in there, and Vic takes it right to the wall. Jim Walker slipping on the inside of Vic Block in the 48 car. Olsen waiting for somebody up front to make a mistake as he hangs back and forth. Bill O'Neill, veteran driver in the 11 car, pole position working well so far as they are into lap number two. And then it's Block slipping into second place. Randy Olsen looking on the outside of Walker. Third place there as Walker tries the inside line. In the lap number three, they'll be looking for the white flag this time around for that trophy dash. And Olsen tries the high side on Walker, not much room. And one more track now. Bill O'Neill, Vic Block, Jim Walker, and Randy Olsen. O'Neill taking that starting position and hanging on very well. Block tries the inside. No room there. and Vic Block, our first event of 1989. presenter Sarah Purser.
Sponsored by S&S Plating, Lennon Brothers Auto Machine, Arcada Muffler, Tom Sourdough Pizza, Resale Lumber, Arcada Body Shop, Arcada Auto, the Coors Light Silver Bullet, 88 T-Bird from Fortuna. Part number 55, Tim Standifer. Fast Tucker, new track record out of turn four. There's the three. car takes that inside starting position out front. Olsen now getting around Phyllis and stand up for the 55 car says I'll just wait and see here and see how things shake down in front of me. Four laps of racing, four top qualifiers. Surely and Olsen in the 16 car trying to make a move on the inside. Now is Standifer. And he tried to dive on the inside of Phyllis in that 73 car. Tim Phyllis decides to try the high line. Standifer very close. Almost straight into the seat pedal. Let Cherry in the 11 car. Hang it on to first place. Phyllis trying that high line. That may not be the place to go to race. Let's see how it works out. And Olsen decides he'll buck in behind Cherry and wait things out. We see the white right flag this time around. Len Shuri, Rusty Olsen, Tim Phyllis, and Tim Standifer. And if anybody can make a move, now is the time to pull it out of the hat and see if he can make it work. Olsen comes right up to Shuri, comes back to the line. Len Shuri, Len Olsen, Tim Phyllis, and Tim Standifer. Our first street stock event of 1989 is... <laughs> <laughs> And back to the 87 car, sponsored by 101 Auto Supply in Riedel, A1 Radiator mu Battery and Muffler in Fortuna, Oysters Mobile in Riedel. It's a 1970 Opal Menta, car number 87, Doug Fulber. Good fast time, takes the back of the back, and the green flag is out. We're underway. Our first ever mini stock trophy dash, and body on the outside. Takes it high on the inside, the three car, Randy Dean. And Doug Pulver says, well, I'll try this outside line here. And that little Opal Meta, he's taking a pretty good shot there, trying to get around Dean. Dean drifting a little high, maybe a little contact between the Biddle and the Opal. And Doug Pulver falls into second place. Probably my last race. These cars, for instance, the Bob Bonnie car running a 2300cc motor. And Doug Culver takes the inside line, trying to squeeze in there. Bob Bonnie says, I'm going to want to give up too much room here. These guys are going at it. Once again, Bonnie goes high, and Culver on the inside. He may have the best racing line. And they start lap number three. These guys are making a race out of it. Culver goes by on the inside. And Bonnie slips to second. Randy Dean decides he'll try that inside line. He'll follow Culver around. Randy Dean to second place now. And Bober trying to lengthen out that lead. His car working very well. White flag is out one more time around. Doug Bober, Randy Dean, and Bob Bonney. And this is Doug's first time in oval track racing. He's got a lot of experience running the road courses with the Sports Car Club of America. Won a regional championship, so he definitely knows how to get the cars from the corners out of turn number four. Checkered flag, Doug Culver, Randy Dean, and Bob Bonney. The 87 car, sponsored by 101 Auto Fortuna, our first ever mini stock winner. Oh, looks like we got family and uh, fiance out there giving him a big hug. It's nice to have your girlfriend and family come out and say hello. Well, Sean Andrews in the 23 car. The Camaro 47 is Mike Portapassi, 41 Richard Butler. Car number 29, Lonnie Tucker. And final star in this heat race is 71 car of Mark Murray. Murray. So two rookie drivers on the front row, Bill Tossi and Sean Andrews, their first time ever in competition. 
Coming up in just a few seconds. And a little bit more experience as the field goes back to quarter pass. Butler, Murray, and Tucker. So watch him carefully, looking to see those top two cars lined up two by two. Ten lap heat race on the way. Looking pretty good out of turn four. There's the green. And we're And the Nova hanging right on that inside. Andrews gives way just a bit as Butler and Murray with the experience try to squeeze through. Now Cortapassi on the inside of Cossi. Murray follows him through. And experience paying off here. Is Mike Cortapassi, Mark Murray, Richard Butler, and Lonnie Tucker down the back straightaway. These cars would be your slower qualifiers in our street stock division. And Murray at the Trans Am starting to set his sights. And Mike with the 47 car driving the 74 Chevelle. And now Butler trying to gain just a little bit on Murray. Top three cars very closely matched as Tucker now gets into it. Number four. Chance for these guys to see how things are working out. First time in competition. Yeah. 89. As we near the halfway point, and now Butler decides he'll try that outside line, but doesn't seem to be working too good so far tonight. Tucker almost slipping in there for third place. Quarter pass in the 47 car is figured out for the best place to be. Kind of frustrating for Murray in the 71 car. Let's watch him closely. See if he gets uh, right up there on his bumper and gives him a little hello once in a while. That happens in this kind of racing. Murray gets up real close there as they come out of turn four. And Butler says he'll try that outside line again. Swings out there. Just does not find any success as far as gaining ground on the top two cars. number eight, 10 lap race. So Murray, Butler, and Tucker will decide if they want to try to make a move here in the next lap or two. get enough horsepower to swing on the inside. He says, yeah, I'll take second place if I can get it, but Murray sneaks back in there. This time around, we'll see the white flag. trying to get on the inside of Murray and just cannot quite pull it down the back straightaway or the front straightaway. Mike Portapassi, 27 car, the 74 Chevelle, and Murray drives the high line, Jenner, Murray, Butler, and Tucker, as the two rookies will finish up this seat race. 74 Chevelle, out of the car, Mike Portapassi from Fortuna. Oh, yeah! like a little reunion with family and friends down there on the front straightaway. Mike ran with us last year at night. Beautifully prepared T-Bird, the 55 car. Defending street stock champion, Tim Sandifer. And the four car had some problems tonight, but he's ready to get a world. Car number four from Garberville. Four car, Eric Freya. Six cars, second street stock heat race. Ten laps of racing. McCracken and Shuri on the front row. Glenn winning the trophy dash earlier tonight. He'd like to make it two in a row if that is possible. Two by two through turn three and four, and we're set to go. Looking pretty good out of turn four. There's the green. And McCracken and Shuri staring door to door. To second place as Olsen takes over third, Phyllis to fourth place with the 73 car, Eric Graham, 
in the four car decides to Randy in the Super Stock Division, been involved in racing for about seven or eight years now. In the Port City Camaro, Nick Block. And the 17 car, brother to our winner just a few moments ago, the 17 car, the I Rock 89 Camaro, car number 17, Randy Olson. And the 48 car, also a very nice qualifying ride tonight. Defending and track champion here at Redford Acres Raceway. 48 car from Ferndale to Walker. Henson. That's a problem to tonight. Nice to see he made it up. Car number 25 did he? is the Marcelli car. We'll try to tell you a little bit more about that car. He had some hot hops but did not make it for the race. And the other car up to the whole deal. Car number 25 sponsored by Dan Harbor Insurance, North Country Roofing, trim line of Eureka, auto detailing, k and Glass. Number 25, owned by Ken and Donna Bowman, and the 25 car, Angelo Marcelli. And we're looking for a start this time around.
Don't look especially friendly in sometime tonight. So out of turn number four. And there's the green. They're underway. Bob Monty says, okay, I'll take that upside line. You don't see stars are a little bit quieter than some of the super stocks. They have to run a stock exhaust system along with just about everything else stock. Of course, you see that they have the safety cages built into the car. And the five-point safety harness. Takes that a little wide there, because these cars are much smaller, so they've got a little more room on the racetrack. And Duck says, I'm going to try that up there, see what happens. Nope, that doesn't seem to be right. Okay, now I'll try the inside. Doug Pulver in the 1970 Opal Manta, and he's trying to squeeze down there, and Bob may not see him just yet. Let's see how that works out. And Bob makes a little high here, runs up against the wall. Tires. Boy, these guys taking two different lines here. Now, this time, Doug has the inside line. I think he's got him. Doug Pulver takes over the lead. He's going to try and make it a clean sweep here tonight. I think he's going to do it, too, unless uh, fate intervenes. And he starts to put a little distance between himself and Bob Bonney in the 43 car. Now, Bob has a little more oval track experience. He ran some enduro cars and street stocks, but... Doug in the 87 car probably has more total racing experience on the road courses. He's been on these type of cars in a lot of different situations. 
also done some excellent uh, hill climbing and we can set some records here at hill climb events. And Boba really starting to lengthen out that lead. We will uh, show the white flag coming up this time of the round. And there it is, one more time around. Lap number six underway. So Doug Pulver is going to have a clean sweep. I think he also had uh, fast time. Let's double check that here. Checker flag, Doug Pulver. And coming out of turn number four. 43 car of Bob Bunny. And three by s and s and Brothers Auto Machine, among others. Number 55, Tim Standifer. 73 cars, sponsored by the Andrea Rufin, Big Lee. And special thanks to Kendrick Campbell, the 73 car, Tim Phyllis. And over to the four car, owned by Bud and Evie Miller, sponsored by Don's Auto Parts, the four car, Eric Graham, the 23 car, young 16-year-old Sean Andrews in his first main event ever. Don sponsored by Starburst Auto and Fortuna, Russ Biasca, Don's Ripples, and we're set to go green. There's the green. In the turn one, the driver is Cassie, and Tucker take that outside line around Bill Cassie in the 21 car. McCracken follows him through, and then it's Olsen slipping by. Butler caught in pressure, and Fury makes his way around Cossie. Graham drives the outside line. together doesn't look like any serious damage uh, tire marks and a little crunch on the right front of Bill Cossie's 1970 Nova so and now we're going to check and see if we've got them back in their original order that's what we're trying to do here is put these cars in the original starting position Place. 
quarter pass. He tried to stay in front of Tucker in the 29 car. Tim Phillips also there. Graham in the four car. The battle now for that second spot is Olsen against the last of the something go wrong in the rear end of that car getting the fixing flag. Bill Cossey in the 21 car also out of action so these cars do take a little bit of a beating out here and we're just about set to go it looks like one more time around and we'll turn loose. Eric Graham in the 79 Pontiac Ventura body. He's got the front wrap off that car. Might have uh, picked up some body damage earlier tonight. Shuri in the 11 car is third. Then Fortapassi and Butler. Top five cars are in line. Out of turn four. There's the grade.
Well, if you're going to get the car out of shape as a rookie driver, sliding into the infield is not a bad place to be. You know, good tonight. The front and heavy Miller owned Pontiac Ventura. And remember, Olsen is a lap down. Shuri is your second place car. Then Porter Passing and Butler. very much like to get around Graham and then hope for a yellow flag. If he could do that, and he could be back on the lead lap, he's trying to get his lap back. And Olsen would like to get that lap back, but Graham holding on very nicely through three and four. and Butler, and Glenn Shorey is pretty much by himself in second place as he comes in to three and four. Everybody seems to be staying out of trouble here as our first street stop event of 1989 begins to wind down. Graham really putting some distance between himself and Glenn Shorey. Right on the bumper of Fury, Lynn may be slowing down a 
curve in. He sure looked like it out of that turn. I imagine he's going to try and keep that inside line and make Graham work for it. He's going to race against each other.
outside line. Walker putting a lot of distance between himself and the rest of the pack.
start to make the challenge on Germoni. Easily takes him. He just slides by on the outside. Olsen follows him through. Situation like that, going into a turn, the lead car or the faster car may just try to outbreak that slower car. In other words, dive in a little bit deeper before hitting the brakes and make the pass. That's what the other guy did. the 1989 season in our super stock division pretty much uh, starting off the way the 88 season ended jim walker in the winner's circle defending track champion and with that win of course he's on his way to uh, defending that championship rather nicely he'll be top point getter when we move into our second event the 48 car the rick harper premiered camaro the walker chassis 
And a reminder for you folks who are already exiting, we'll be back here two weeks from tonight, two weeks from tonight, for Redwood Acres Raceway, our regular Saturday night program. Next Saturday, the Mini World of Outlaws, the carts will be racing in the infield. So you want to take a look at that, enjoy a little different style of racing. That'll be next Saturday night. If you would intend to cross the track and take a look at these race cars, we invite you to be very patient about that. If you have younger children with you, hang on to their hands. Out of the car from Ferndale, Jim Walker. almost identical to last year's car. That's a brand new uh, chassis. It's a modified chassis built from, uh, I guess, a lot of different components that uh, master car builder and engine builder Rick Harper has put together for Jim in 1989. Tim McEwen out for consultation, saying hi. And our track photographer, Sherry Baldwin. Once again, a reminder for you folks who do intend to cross 